During this presentation, Mike and I will be discussing how Simulink is being used for virtual vehicle development. Along the way, we'll share some new capabilities and best practices that can help if you're new to virtual vehicle or if you're trying to scale an existing model you have for new use cases. MathWorks has a balanced approach to helping customers build their virtual vehicle. We have a very powerful platform with lots of out-of-the-box capabilities. As you'll see in this presentation today, MathWorks is continuing to invest heavily in this area by offering new features and new products to provide the most complete solution on the market today. Also, our platform is known for being flexible. Customers often have a unique set of requirements, so they need a flexible platform to meet these needs. We've been helping customers build virtual vehicles for decades, and we can use our expertise to provide guidance and support as needed. MathWorks defines virtual vehicle as a functional simulation of full vehicle behavior, which is capable of supplementing or replacing a physical prototype vehicle. This would be for a specific set of tests and analyses. We've worked with many customers over the years, and I've selected three use cases that I'd like to share with you today. Tesla uses virtual vehicle for design trade-off and component sizing studies. Ricardo used one of our vehicle models to simulate passenger comfort in autonomous driving applications. You might have seen the Ford presentation earlier where they use their virtual vehicle framework called FAST for a variety of system analyses, including software validation. Customers like BMW are seeing the amount of software increasing in what they call value add share. It's becoming a key differentiator for many brands, which is driving the need to test the software as soon as possible. Driver assistance systems are one of the reasons why we are seeing this increase in software complexity. Let's take an example lane following system, which is designed to keep the vehicle centered in the lane. Of the many functional requirements, I've selected one for our discussion today. This functional requirement states, the lateral air of the system shall be less than one meter, and that means the vehicle should be within one meter of the target position within the lane side by side. This requirement has many downstream impacts on the overall system and poses a few immediate questions. One big question that you might have is, what happens when a failure of the system occurs. Well, this requirement still needs to be upheld when a failure like lost communication with the steering sensor happens. If the failure happens while navigating a curve, things like curvature and vehicle speed will dictate how fast the system needs to be able to respond. This feeds into the controller response time and ultimately impacting the speed of the processor. In order to answer these questions, we need to assemble a system and see how it responds to a set of test cases to analyze system performance. With the lane keeping system, many components interact with each other. We need to consider things like the vehicle dynamics, the environmental scenarios, sensors that detect the lanes, and the controllers for the steering and lane keeping, to name a few. One approach to testing system level interactions is to wait until the hardware can be integrated. This pushes the system level testing to late in the development process. Oftentimes, we see this first taking place on the hardware in the loop bench. Thinking back to our functional safety requirement, imagine if we found that the CPU throughput was too low this late in the development cycle. This would cause a costly redesign of the hardware or create a compromise in our system performance. Instead of waiting so late in the development process, virtual vehicle allows you to start testing sooner on the left-hand side of the V. In many cases, you can start testing in the requirements definition phase. The rest of our presentation will discuss some of the challenges with achieving the benefits of virtual vehicle and how MathWorks tools can help you overcome these challenges. We'll then come back to the lane following case study and show how all these pieces come together. I'll turn it over to Mike where he'll discuss the next two sections of the presentation. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's begin with some comments from folks. So having a virtual vehicle early for that integration testing can save time and money, but there are of course some challenges along the way. So we've grouped these challenges into the categories you see above, 
what we're going to do in the rest of this section, we're going to talk about what those challenges are. And then in the next section, we'll talk some more about the MathWorks solutions to help you overcome so the, some of those challenges. So once we know what those requirements are that we want to test, the first challenge is just to get the vehicle model there so you can start the testing. So sometimes we may have a vehicle model available from prior work that we've done on different projects in the past, but they may not necessarily be appropriate for the kinds of analyses you're trying to run now. Uh, do you have access to the right sensor models, the right plan models for the right fidelity for the particular project you're trying to do now? And can you integrate these pieces in with other uh, things you're trying to pull in from different teams or different tools? How difficult is it to calibrate these models? These are the kinds of challenges that we're often faced with at the outset of these projects. The next phase is to get the controller modules into there. Uh, we need to understand what the required interfaces and data are for these. And often these control modules, they're coming from outside of our particular group. So we need to be able to connect to different repositories to get access to them. And often we have to assemble these pieces coming in not just from other groups, but from other software as well. So we need a good way to integrate these pieces into one model. Once the model is ready, now we can define what the tests are that we want to run it on. That involves both creating this 3D environment for it, sometimes uh, the different scenarios we want to test, and linking these simulations back to the original requirements we're trying to validate. Now that we can run these simulations, we can analyze user results, but we need a flexible environment for doing that. Uh, there's all kinds of different post-processing and visualization things we may want to do. And rarely are we running just a single simulation. So we need a platform that allows us to scale from just a few simulations up to a very large number of them. And lastly, once we have the stable testing environment, we want to be able to deploy it to another audience. So for example, we may have other analysts that are domain experts, but not necessarily uh, experts in the tools we're using. So we want to be able to get the models into their hands for decision making in a way that's useful for them. And of course, one end goal is often to deploy those models for things like software in the loop or hardware in the loop testing. So we may need to be able to generate code for these kinds of applications. So having laid out some of these challenges, let's now talk about some of the MathWorks solutions to help you overcome them. First, we, we go back to this model building phase. So some customers, as we mentioned, may come into this process with a, a model in hand. Uh, it may or may not be suitable for their needs, uh, but we can help you customize that and apply the best practices for model-based design that we've been using for a number of years now. Other customers may be looking for starting points, uh, such as the reference applications that MathWorks has been releasing in the last few years. These are detailed vehicle and system level models for powertrain, vehicle dynamics, and ADAS applications, just to name a few. Now, at the bottom of this, uh, you'll see on the left, there are some links that you can go to to get additional information on these points. You'll find these in many of the following slides to give you uh, some resources to follow up with. So often the model itself may not give you everything you need, so you may need to add details such as using some in-house Simulink models to fill those other gaps, or using some of the libraries from the Simulink and Simscape uh, libraries that we've been uh, developing over these last few years. And in Mark's talk in the, in the automotive conference, you're going to hear some more about some of these sensor models, for example. And sometimes the models you get may be coming from other tools. Uh, we have ways to integrate that. MathWorks has been a leading integration platform for decades now. And we can help you pull in other software pieces from S functions or FMUs or what, whatever it is that you have. Once the vehicle model is assembled, now you need to start connecting in those algorithms. So that may come from a variety of sources, be it native Simulink models or S functions and FMUs, or you can even incorporate in C code, bring that directly into your, into your Simulink model. This gives you a very flexible platform to integrate your pieces together. Um, but one of the challenges is sometimes just assembling all these things, just the, the, the work of putting these together. And you'll hear in another of the automotive conference talks how Ford was working with MathWorks to help automate some of that build process so they, they could build their, their code much more efficiently. Now, you're often working with other teams. You have to collaborate with them. So we use things like MATLAB projects as a way to connect with those other teams. You can assemble your models, your scripts, your data files, all into these MATLAB projects and then connect them to something like a version control system from uh, SVN or Git. And that makes the collaboration just much more practical. Once you have that closed loop system, now you can start to define the scenarios that you want to run. We have a lot of tools to help you do so, one of which is shown here, the Driving Scenario Designer app. This is a, a user interface where you can define different roads that you want to put together. 
and some paths for the vehicles that you want to put around it using this kind of uh, cuboid interface that you've seen here. We also recently introduced the Roadrunner. A Roadrunner is a tool that you can use to create these very complex uh, 3D scenes for uh, different road networks. It has a very intuitive interface for building these things, and then it has the ability to export these scenes into formats such as Open Drive or FBX so that you can then use these scenes in other platforms. You can also use things like our verification and validation tools to automate some sequence of tests that you may want to run and uh, link those back to the requirements that you have that you're trying to validate against and maybe want to create some kind of custom reports from that. So our VNV tools can help you to accomplish all these things as well. Once the simulations are done, you can now generate different kinds of plots or animations or maps or other kinds of, of uh, information that you may want to look at. And it's the extreme flexibility of the MATLAB platform that's really been a core strength for our company. So you can do all these things, you can create live scripts, you can automate different report generation, all so that you can start to go from information to decision. One challenge is scaling these up. So how do you go from just a few desktop simulations to hundreds of thousands of simulations? So MathWorks tools can help you scale from just a, a multi-core local computer up to the GPU, using computing clusters or, or running things off in the cloud without needing to rewrite code. Once you're satisfied that the virtual vehicle model is producing the results and the reports you need, now you can deploy it for additional use cases. We have things like the Apps uh, Designer where you can create custom user interfaces that are, are there to help your end users have a much more user-friendly environment to work with. And then you can use our uh, installers to distribute these, these models, such as a, a standalone executable or an FMU or some kind of a web app. Of course, MathWorks is also known for its outstanding code generation capabilities. So you can deploy these models for things like SIL and HIL testing. And uh, while our platform is very flexible and a lot of our customers are using these tools in unique ways, not all groups may have the resources or the experience they need to do this efficiently. So our consulting services team can help you in a variety of ways, be it um, providing guidance through the modeling uh, part of this to help you build those models, automating different workflows, or developing custom UIs for your team. Our consultants have almost uh, 20 years of experience on average, including about a dozen or so years in the industry before joining MathWorks. So we have the skills to help you get your job done. So finally, we're gonna come back to this case study. So Chris will, will see how the features that we've talked about in this section I'll tie back into that original uh, lane following example that we had at the top. Thank you, Mike. Jumping back to that case study. The highway lane following reference application that ships in the automated driving toolbox has implemented some of the capabilities Mike just shared with us. Let's see how we can use it to validate our functional requirement. To test the requirement, we need a model that represents the vehicle including the components associated with the lane following system and test scenarios. In the video, we've integrated a simple vehicle model with the sensor models and the software features needed to validate the lane following requirement. This is all integrated under one test bench. With Simulink requirements, we can capture both written requirements and graphical test description. We can then associate the test scenarios and the algorithm components to our functional safety requirement. This allows us to capture traceability between requirements, tests, and the algorithm. This is the design phase where you would devise test cases where the steering sensor fails and we would associate that with the functional safety requirement. The image here shows multiple requirements and the associated test cases. Once we have our virtual vehicle set up, you can run the simulation and interactively visualize multiple pieces of information. In the upper right hand side, we're visualizing the system behavior using the Unreal Engine. This allows us to see how the vehicle is traversing between the lane markings. On the lower left, we can take a look at the performance of the lane marker detection algorithm. We've overlaid the lane markings on top of the image frames to see how well it's performing. On the lower right, we're visualizing the control signals, which allows us to see how the controller is performing for the specific scenario. Now, 
having the ability to interactively visualize the simulation results is very useful when we're looking to gain an understanding of the system performance or trying to debug a specific scenario. But as the requirements and test cases increase, you want to be able to automate that test execution. Simulink tests allows us to automate the test execution and run each of the scenarios or each of the simulations in parallel. During the simulated tests, the test assessment is automatically captured for reporting purposes and further analysis. In this case, we've automatically generated a report including the system level behavior data, such as the lateral offset that we've been interested in. And through this report, we can look at all the test scenarios and see how well the system is performing in terms of that lateral offset. In particular, are we pushing against the maximum requirement or for the majority of our cases, are we operating in a safe region? Also, we can look at the performance of an individual component, such as the lane detection algorithm. In this case, we're looking at the performance of the algorithm and comparing it to the ground truth. This kind of report can be used to show us whether or not we've met the requirements for our system. With the reference design, we have generated code for the algorithms which would be used for software in the loop testing or for deployment to hardware. Keep in mind, the workflow we just showed will also work for integration and test of hand code. If you'd like to explore deploying this model to a distributed simulation or the cloud, my team of application engineers can work with you to see what is possible. Our consulting organization can help you scale your simulation based on your specific needs and environment using their years of experience in virtual vehicle. To summarize our case study, we started off with a reference example and, and then customized it for our needs. The reference amp included the software that we were testing as well as the scenarios we needed to test. We were able to simulate the model and analyze the results both interactively and through a generated report. Finally, we talked about how we could deploy the model through code generation or software in the loop testing. We hope that this presentation gave you a better understanding of how MathWorks has been investing in a powerful platform that provides a lot of capability while remaining flexible to our customers' unique needs. All right, I'll hand it back to Mike to close out the presentation. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so you have our contact information here, so please reach out if you have questions. We're gonna open up a WebEx poll in a moment. To, um, we're trying to get some information about the challenges we talked about today. How difficult are they for your organization? And if you'd like to any follow-up conversations with us. Um, so please, we, we welcome your feedback and we'll open up for some questions now. 